it's dangerously smooth. It is. It's like Ian awesome. Summerholder. I'm like a whiskey sour and you're the port. No, you're just sour. <laughs> Welcome to Entertainment Weekly's Three Rounds. I'm Sam Heifel, and I'm joined by the creators of this beautiful thing, Paul Wesley and Ian Summerhalder. Round one, we're drinking your your Mystic Charmer. You guys explain what this what this cocktail is. One and a half ounces of Brothers Bond Straight Bourbon Whiskey, half an ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of honey syrup, which is a combination of equal parts honey and water, yep. and you top it with ginger ale. It's dangerously good, and you can have it in the summer, you can have it like, you're, you know, during the day. It's like one of these cocktails where it's just, it's refreshing. You know, the only thing about it is there's some steps to making honey syrup, but it is so worth it. Literally, it's just honey and water. You warm it, put it in your glass, or put it in a bottle, let it cool. Sorry, right, so about 15 seconds. That's all you got, buddy? <laughs> oh, Jesus, spilled all over me. So, not the hair. Not the, Don't touch the hair. Stephen, you can't <laughs> touch Stefan's hair. We all know. Um, yeah, of course. So we have our own Brothers Bond strainer, which mm -hmm. we're super proud of. We're going to strain this over fresh ice. We're just going to top this with a little bit of yummy ginger ale. Oh, delicious. Oh, that would have been bad. He's hammered already. <laughs> and that lemon wheel. Yep, sure. little brothers bond. Get in there, dog. Get, get in, in the there. bottom. Get in there. Pull it up. Pull it up. Shall it's we? Unbelievable. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Oh. Oh. No crazy, right? Oh, it's just Del delicious. I could drink that whole thing. So for those who haven't seen the show, we played uh, brothers who drank bourbon on screen. Off screen, Ian and I also bonded drinking bourbon. Uh, obviously, we weren't drinking bourbon on screen. Otherwise, well, his performance would have been a lot better. I would have. He would have forgotten even more lines. Um, but the, the, the reality is we would finish shooting and we go to the bar or we go to our homes or whatever. And we'd always kick back and have a bourbon. So we developed this love for bourbon. Ian had it. It's the only so way that we could actually tolerate, tolerate each other. other. Career-wise, let's talk. What was your first audition? <clears throat> oh, my God. Mine, I, I, I'll just... I. I got a, I started doing theater in elementary, or yeah, in elementary yeah, school. Elementary. And I was doing, you know, kinds of just like, you know, theater stuff. And then I, I was doing this uh, theater workshop in, uh, in uh, New York City and an agent saw me and said, hey, do you want to audition for a, for a soap opera? And I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, did. that's right. So I, I auditioned for the soap opera and I got the job. Um, but you were young, was, right? Yeah, I was really young. Um, so that was, that was, that was my first real audition. I had done like a couple little commercials, uh, but I never really auditioned. It was more like an extra, you know, you put your headshot, you know, they submit your headshot kind of thing. But, but that was my first real audition and I got the gig. The show got canceled like three months later. <laughs> um, what show? It was called Another World. I think my, my mom uh, used to take me to auditions um, at like local theater when I was a, really a kiddo. And I want to say my first audition, I think, probably either at school or for a production was, I want to say, like, fourth grade, maybe? So fourth, maybe fifth, no, probably fourth, fourth, fifth grade. And I knew very early, like, this is what I want to do. It's a long time. You know, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> and we still don't know. What the hell. Looking at me so seriously. Let's, let's go to drink number two. Talk to me about Blood right. Brothers, which is a great episode of Vampire Diaries. One and a half ounces, Brothers Bond Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 0.75 ounces, the lemon juice. And 0.7 ounces, simple syrup. 0.75 ounces of port wine. Blood Brothers is really <laughs> our take on a classic whiskey sour. And the reason whiskey sours have been consumed for a hundred plus years is because A, it's really nice the typically bourbon is going to be really a lot stronger than ours. And this really balances it out. But that woodiness of the bourbon is really nicely balanced out with the citrus and the sweet. We love to put a port wine on top of it, which just really, and what's cool is, is that you'll see it, the legs of the, you know, the wine, you know, wine comes down and really just mixes and gives it this really incredible flavor. So without any further ado, without further ado, we get this beautiful liquid point. Seven five ounces of port over this. Now watch how beautiful this is. Oh, this. there it is. And you get this like gorgeous. It comes down the sides. 
you know, I mean, it's just a beautiful, simple cocktail, but like, this is a whiskey sour, but the brother's way. I'd like to preface this by saying I made mine in a rush and also like half an hour ago. So pay attention to theirs. It's that's the pretty one. Mine just is here. Uh-huh. Cheers. Cheers. Yours is very porty. I know it is. I want that at a summer picnic. I'm like a whiskey sour and you're the port. No, you're just sour. Can you drink iced tea anymore or were you done with it by the end of Vampire Diaries? Uh, well, I'll tell you a funny, funny, funny iced tea story. So we were obviously drinking the iced tea uh, quite often. And, you know, when you're on set, you're doing take after take after take after take. And, you know, you take a sip and a scene. Well, you got to, for continuity, you have to do it essentially from every angle, wide, medium. So about season one, we were all just like. So, <laughs> yeah. And so the uh, first season, I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> I was jittery. I thought it was just because I was nervous. Turns out I was just consuming so much caffeine because sure. there's so from much 7 caffeine. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Yeah, and I'm drinking like six, 800 so, milligrams. Yeah. So season two, caffeine. we switched it out to to decaf, uh, decaffeinated <laughs> iced tea. Um, because, man, I was losing it. We were literally season one, we were lunatics because we were drinking this tea. Okay, but I remember you guys talking about when we talked about like the pilot of Vampire Diaries. You went apartment shopping so that you could get (laughs) apartments next to each other so you could like rehearse all the time, right? So like, did you? Did you rehearse all the time? Is that a key part? we, We flew to Atlanta together so we can find apartments. By the way, that was in May of 2009. Isn't that wild? That was May of 2009. Time, yeah. But we flew, we flew to uh, Atlanta when we, we both got, we got, we <laughs> literally got out of the car. We got, we just, it just so happened we were wearing this. No, we arrived right at the airport. When I met you, I pulled up and I had a, I had a, a hybrid car. We had like some flashy rims on it. And no, it was we, really tinted. We had, we had, we had, we had white t-shirts. But we were wearing the exact same clothes. Same jeans, same, same boots, boots and the same, same backpack and backpack. <laughs> And we pulled oh, yeah. up to the hotel. We had black yeah, Ray-Bans black Ray Bands. We pulled up to the hotel and they're like, Are you guys in a we band? Like, we look like the Blues Brothers. I'm not getting The you. show hadn't premiered yet. It was really funny. It hadn't so, premiered yet. We hadn't even shot it yet. Yeah. No, we 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 uh oh we spent God. a ton of um time rehearsing. Uh well, we wanted to be that's why we wanted our apartments next to each other so that we could we knew that we needed to be brothers, but we wanted to rehearse everything. Together. Hey, you know what? In this new creative space, should we get a bunk bed? <laughs> and then just kind of have the sleepovers and talk bourbon? Big brother gets the top bunk. <laughs> you do try your best to, to uh, form a, a bond uh, with whomever you're working with because you spend a lot of time together. But yeah, with us, it came pretty easily. I think a lot of our sort of synergy, sort of, we joke around about it, but the truth is we are kind of different, you know? and, and Totally. And, and I think that's what kind of allows it to, to sort of co- co- coexist. I think when people are too similar, at first it can be great, but then the end, it ends up kind of sort of, you know, wearing itself out in a way. We're so different that um, he brings what he brings to the table. I bring what I bring to the table and we kind of, it just sort of blends nicely, you know? And, and I think that it's a really, uh, it's a unique, but, but, but really fantastic synergy for not only friendship, but business. It's also well. been tested. You know, you're talking about a, over a decade of testing, mm-hmm. right? He and I, we helped build a massive pop cultural phenomenon of a television show together based, not based. In all humility. No, and I mean, I mean I'm saying that <laughs> humility. I do say that all in humility, but built on the backs of us and our cast and our, our whole production team and our you know, right, everybody's, everyone's backs, that was built. But this dude and I had to show up every day and love what we were doing, respect one another and build on it every single day. I mean it, our souls are in this bottle. And Don't quote me on that. Round three, let's let's talk oh, about yeah. this, this bourbon okay. teas. One and a half ounces of Brothers Bond. Whiskey, you have three ounces of uh, ginger kombucha. Uh, you squeeze a lemon so wedge. Yeah, incredible. Damn, that's good. And one uh, <laughs> teaspoon of freshly grated and peeled so ginger. Literally, freshly grated ginger. And by so, the way, again, I want to reiterate, this is all on our website, so you don't have to, you know, people want to make this at home. It gives you the method and the ingredients and photos and everything. So anyway, here it is. 
in, you know, in its finished form. And um, I'm going to use a Brothers Bond beautiful cocktail spoon. So the bourbon teas is, is a, a sort of Cheers. modern take. Should we, should we take a sip? Kombucha. Cheers, sister. Cheers. It's kombucha. It's bourbon. Mm. 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 Can't even taste the bourbon, uh, which I don't know if that's a good thing because it's just so, it's like, it's like, you it's don't even know you're so drinking alcohol. Good. So for a bourbon company, for us, Gen Z, we get the tail end. Uh, that 21 to 24 year old, uh -huh. um, the 22 maybe to 24 year old is the very tail end of the Gen Z generation. And so that generation is incredibly engaged. Uh, they are very, very, very aware of the things they're drinking. And the other thing about it too, and this is something that we talk about at a, from a corporate level, which is so strange for us to say, <laughs> but as a company level is that Millennial and Gen Z consumers. I'm a millennial, just so you know. You are a millennial. But you know, <laughs> well, millennials and Gen Zs are going to change the world, right? But the idea is, is like, listen, millennial consumers and Gen Z consumers, they want to know that the companies that they are spending their hard-earned dollars supporting are going to something that means is meaningful. That these companies are good stewards of their environment, their corporate structure, their communities, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are so proud of this company. It's not just building these like incredible cocktails or even just bourbon. You can yeah. drink warm out of the bottle. I think what he's getting at is we have a give back component. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I don't know if, if you know about it, but it, we're really excited about it. In fact, our neck tag, um, you know, sort of speaks to that. And so we're giving a portion of all of our sales um, are, is going towards uh, regenerative agriculture. So yeah, I mean, what Ian says is, is totally accurate. I think these days, if you start a company, you have to sort of think about um, how you can give back. But you know, one of the other things that I think is so special about our brand, or at least what we stand for and our ethos of our company, we talk about it with our team, is that we're not interested in just selling alcohol. It's like, we're interested in people purchasing this and experiencing a bond with whomever they're sharing it with. I mean, really, and I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but it's true. Alcohol it's is true. meant to be consumed um, in celebration and in, in kinship and as a bond. And so we really want the, the brother's bond name. Yeah, okay, it's a nod to us. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a bond with whomever you're sharing this drink with. And I, I think that's so important for us to really note um, to yeah. our fans and to people that are, you know, buying this is to really enjoy this with someone. Let's end this on one final cheers, guys. Cheers to you and Brothers Bond. Cheers. Cheers, Samantha. Thanks, guys. Good talking to you. Thank you, Samantha.